Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Art Bros. Fancy Dave with me as always. Yep, yep. And I'm Mike. And today we're going to be doing what we love doing, talking about art informally so that you guys can appreciate it. You better. And start discussing it. Now we're just going crazy yes, doing this. Yes, yes, we've been doing this for a while and we love doing it. Today we're talking about uh, Frederick Layton's magnum opus, Flaming June. This thing was painted in 1895 and it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Looking at it, you think Flaming June. Oil not, on canvas. Yes, not a lot of uh, paintings have titles that kind of match mm -hmm. what people describe of them. You know, like like you think something like Turner, slave ships, mm -hmm. it doesn't really, the term slave ship doesn't really magnify the light that comes out of that picture. Mm -hmm. You got this, Flaming June. Yep, yeah, it's, she's wearing a gown of fire, right? But, but, well, I'm speaking more rhetorically, but uh, yeah, yeah, you get true. what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's a, the first thing you notice about this thing, bright orange, in, right in the center, too. Mm-hmm. You have the sun right behind her. It's another kind of flaming motif and whatnot. Um, like that on the water there, pretty bright. Uh, before, okay, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, for, so Frederick Layton, he was a British artist that worked in the late 1800s. He was the president of the Royal Academy, actually. So mm -hmm. there's actually a self-portrait of him that I, meet, I wanted to show you. He's just a boss. Like this guy, he's got like his medal mm -hmm. out and he's got the robe and whatnot. He really liked the robes and drapery. And he or drapery, and he really liked. Uh, well, around the this end is of more his like life. Uh, what I read was like this was done for art for art's sake. So it's true. Here we're talking when we say things that just look good, people. We're talking aesthetics, and this, and these are this is a painting focusing very much on the aesthetics of this. So in the late 1800s yeah. of in the Victorian era, a lot of people just focused on what looked good. The mm -hmm. aesthetic movement. Yeah. Uh, we have also have guys like Whistler who's one of was one of his contemporaries who did similar portraits like these but they were very monotone. They were very elegant and very formal. And you got this guy with bam color and, and, and poses. Poses. Yeah, <laughs> poses. Let's talk about the pose for a second, Dave. Mm -hmm. That massive thigh is probably the the thing that calls the most attention. Mm -hmm. That thigh is is not human, you know. Well, no. it is human, but it's not. You know, it's, thighs aren't that big. It's, uh, it's presented to be as exaggerated as possible, yeah. even though it is cloaked. If she stood up, she'd be really tall. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like that. That is more than half the size of her torso. So it's it's. I have no problem with it. Mm -hmm. In my research, in my readings, um, and when I saw this in person, a lot of people have a problem with it. But I honestly compare it to how necks were elongated during the Renaissance mm -hmm. to give that sort of beauty. But for thighs. <laughs> for thighs. I have no problem with the uh, elongated thigh, but I actually like it. Mm -hmm. I, it enhances the picture for me. And yeah, what do you think about the, the thigh? Thigh? Um, I don't mind it. I, I guess it is for... I guess for more dramatic purposes in a way, like, ah, oh, look at this. Look at this exaggerated pose. Like, yeah. she's just laying down here. She's sleeping, or she's mm -hmm. drugged, or she's, you know, on the edge of death, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, I do want to talk about the background for a little bit. We have what looks like an awning, and a lot of people kind of mistake, when they don't see, unless they see it in person, they kind of take that gold top as, like, the frame. But it's actually not the frame. It's an awning, and you can see that there's a little red stick. Coming okay. out on the top right. Yeah, I was kind of wondering about that. No, that's an on. It's supposed to be an awning. And it's supposed to be very like a Mediterranean scene. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's from London, so, so. Like, <laughs> this is how he saw the Mediterranean. And it's from people that I've spoken to. It's not that off, honestly. Mm -hmm. He's got this very laid back. She's sleeping, and the and the sun the sunset, the Mediterranean it's being culture. reflected in in the most romantic of ways, right? Like exactly. these are. This is what it is out there, right? Yeah. In, in the Mediterranean, chilling. Yeah, it's, this is how, uh, like, you know, someone in London mm -hmm. would see the Mediterranean. It's being painted in his studio in London. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, oh, this is what I found out about the uh, actual sketches that went behind this. Right, the oil ones and the, the drawings. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, he did a lot of nude sketches first just mm. to get down the figure just the way he wanted to do it. The pose and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah you can you can still tell, like, right? Because this is, almost feels like it's, he literally just draped it over the uh, the final piece itself, in That's a way. That's true. Because you see some of the nipple, breast, mm -hmm. exposed. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the thigh is the thing that sticks out the most there, right? It makes you think, like, was the drape an afterthought? Was it like, let me put it on? Yeah, that's afterward. what I'm wondering. You know, Obviously, in the sketches that he did, he had nude poses, and then 
and then came the drape. There's some couple of sketches with the drape. There's an oil color sketch with the drape on it. Mm -hmm. um, but a little bit back to the background, I have read that people think that that background mm -hmm. of the sea and the shimmering sky represents the dream that she's having. Okay. And, and when she wakes up, it'll just go back to being a regular wall. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny that that background is almost like an enclosed space between the, uh, like what would you call the background here? The marbles. The marbling yeah. and the uh, awning on top. So it's it's almost like you're just having a thought bubble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, what I do want to talk about the anytime you think of Flaming June, you think of late in 1895. Mm -hmm. You think about the story behind this painting, and there is an amazing story behind this painting. Uh, this painting resides in the Ponce Museum in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Puerto Rico of all places. Uh, because it was bought by the founder of the museum, I believe his name was Louis, Louis Ferre. Louis Ferre. Mm -hmm. It was bought in 1963 for about like $4,000 American, which is unheard of when you talk about Flaming Jr. Just think of these Victorian paintings. Because in the 60s, Victorian paintings were not in. Nope, nope. They were not in. He bought this thing for like pennies on the dollar pretty much. This was basically on the clearance rack. Yeah, it was on the clearance <laughs> rack, exactly. It's like when you find an old shirt on the clearance rack and then like 10 years later people want like are selling it for 90 bucks, mm -hmm. you know? So that's the same concept that hits here and it's, it's, it's a concept that happens in art which is something you don't really hear about because you're so used to hearing paintings like this being worth tens of millions and hundreds of dollars, mm -hmm. you know? Um, this thing was bought for about 4000 American brought to Puerto Rico and a museum was made with the collection that Luis Ferre made well, all collected. Uh, he brought a lot of Victorian work to the Caribbean. That's okay. what he wanted to do. That was his aim and this is his uh his uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like his prize, you know, his prize. This possession. is the uh <laughs> the jewel of the collection mm -hmm. pretty much. You know, the the museum they make a big deal about having this and it was on loan in New York and that's when I got to see it. Um so anyways, uh, just what are your final thoughts on this guy? Is there anything we missed out? Anything we missed out it's on? It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It really is. And in, in person, it's, it's just mag. It's magnificent. There's like no way of like, you need the gown in this. It, it makes the whole thing. Like now I'm thinking back to if she was just nude. Yeah. But like without it, it loses that, you know, dramatic flair that it needs. Like right it there. Does. Yeah. It, you can argue that the, the gown, the mm -hmm. drape, whatever it's called, makes it makes her look a lot more innocent mm -hmm. than like the nudity would be even though nudity has been time and time again used for innocence innocence and purity and, and purity yeah. but like the gown kind of like you have this voyeuristic feel of you're watching this girl mm -hmm. just you know maybe she's passed out from a party or maybe she's just taking a nap or something it's the mediterranean you know they were, they could be partying or they could just she could just be lounging mm -hmm. and you put this drape around her not only does it take attention away from her it's so beautifully done it's it just also adds this sort of like is it a dress is it a blanket mm -hmm. well, you know what's going on there I, I do believe it's a dress but yeah. yeah but that was my final like takeaway just just that use of the gown and that like orange yeah. That orange is great. Flaming June! Mm -hmm. The personification of spring, as I've heard. Why not? Mm -hmm. Well, anyways. Um, so, guys, tell us what you think about this painting. I love it. Fancy Dave? I love it. You love I it? I like it. I like it. I messed up. I messed up. <laughs> you like it. <laughs> and join us next time on Art Bros. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to you on our YouTube channel right over here. We really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for a lot of the... All the support, really. Thank you for all the support that we've been getting lately. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on Twitter, mm -hmm. at the Art Bros, or is it just Art Bros? It's uh, at art underscore bros. Yes. And Facebook, just search the Art Bros or Art Bros. We're probably the first result on there. <laughs> yes. Uh, and if you haven't caught us, uh, we were recently on... K Chung Radio in um, LA. Yeah, on the show Drawn to Scale with Sun Vu and Jonathan Moore. Yes, and there will be links to that. Mm -hmm. So, guys, uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to see you next time on Art Bros, and uh, peace out. Mm -hmm. Bye. Until next time.